Hello everybody, welcome back to another Mortal Jellyfish video. Now in this video, I do got something rather special for you guys. I unlocked the Alchemist Kit in the Battle Pass. To do that, you just simply need to play the game and get level 10. Uh, it is a free kit, but this video is going to be whether you should or should not grind it, or, you know, just in-depth detail of what the kit does and how it works and how it functions. As you can see up here, we've spent 66 minutes in this lobby testing things and going all in-depth with this kit to figure out what it all has. I'm going to teach you guys spawn commands and lots of other information about how sharpness affects the damage and basically just a ton of information. So if you do appreciate me wasting my time and uh, share wasting their time here uh, for over an hour, uh, make, sure, make sure to smash that like button. Uh, and on that note, let's get into the video. Okay, so as we kick off this video, I do just want to remind you that this is not an entertainment video for per se. This is 100% going to just be a ton of information coming your way. So if you really want to learn in depth about Alchemist, this is your video. And uh, that said, let's get into this. So just starting off, I have all the Alchemist items here. I have our three ingredients, which is mushrooms, thorns, and flowers. What you're going to do is you'll see these spawn around the map, and you're more than welcome to go collect them. In normal games, this is what you'll do. And when you collect enough of these, you'll go back to your base in the shop and you can buy yourself a nifty cauldron as you can see there in the shop it's gonna cost you 15 iron not too shabby once you have that cauldron you can put this down and you can mix a combination of these three ingredients so for instance if I put three mushrooms in here you'll see that it starts to craft this is the whole premise of the kit you basically want to roam around grab the ingredients off the ground and then put them in the pot and cook them up to make different potions. Those different potions are going to be mini shields, time bombs, sleep potions, healing splash potions, and a poison splash potion. Uh, that said, that is the basis of how this kit works. So moving forward, I'm going to list five pros and five cons just overall of the kit as a quick just instant information out there. And then we're going to dive into detail about spawn commands, damage these things do, and just how they function each potion themselves does. So right off the top of my head, five pros here. Uh, the first one is going to be that you have heals. Now you're going to have that heals via this splash health potion, which will look something like this. You could throw that and heal. So let's do some damage to ourselves here and I'll show you how this heal potion works. It will also work on you and enemies. So you can see that I could throw this on the ground and we get healed. Boom. Big thumbs up so you have heals. Second pro is going to be strong armor pen with poison. And as you can see, my friend here is in... Uh, emerald armor and this still hits pretty hard if i do remember correctly this should deal about 14 damage to emerald armor with no armor penetration so that's pretty good so you'll have good armor penetration options too with the poison potion the next thing that is a pro is you can cc or crowd control basically basically stop people from doing stuff and that's going to be in the from the sleep bomb uh, when you throw this you got to be careful because you can sleep yourself I'll show you that here this is gonna go ahead and put us both to sleep it lasts for roughly two seconds uh, and it'll put you both to sleep but if you're far enough away you can definitely throw this at them and then come in here and get some early hits if I had my sword on my bar uh, and also something to note though is you can spam these two for whatever reason you have a ton of these you can basically just perma sleep someone forever <laughs> so that's something fun to do uh, next up though is a uh, the next pro, our fourth pro is going to be all the stuff is free minus the cauldron. So you can make all these lovely potion items for free as long as you run around and collect your ingredients. So, except the cauldron. The cauldron is going to run you 15 iron, but that's not a big deal. The fifth pro to this kit is just that it's very versatile. You got shields, you got heals, you got these bombs which are kind of worthless. They hurt you and hurt the enemy. If you're better armor, they make sense. If you're weaker armor, they're terrible. You got CC because you can sleep and you got high damage and armor pen with the poison. So what are the cons to this kit? Well, I got five cons to balance out those pros. So those cons are going to be that you share ingredients with everybody. So if my enemy grabs this let's tell him to grab this and when he grabs that mushroom you'll see that it disappears see we share these whether he's on my team or he's an enemy we share ingredients so that kind of sucks because if there's a bunch of alchemists and alchemists being a level 10 kit uh you're gonna see a lot of them and they're, they're gonna all be grabbing uh the ingredients off the ground so yeah that'll definitely hurt you in the long run 
Uh, another con is that you can hurt yourself with potions, and you did see that earlier. If I throw this poison potion too close to myself, you'll see that I get hit with it. Same with this bomb potion. No matter how you do this bomb potion, you will get hit because it explodes on you, and you can see that I get hit from that too. So keep in mind that you can hurt yourself with Alchemist. You cannot hurt your teammates though, so that's a big thumbs up. Um, the next con though, our third one on the list, is that this requires knowledge to use this kit. And you may be saying, what, what kind of knowledge does it require? Well, if you want to craft certain potions, the ideal situation is to get the potion you want for what's going on in your game. Say you got a guy who's got really high armor and you need that armor pen, well, you're going to want the poison potion. But if you don't know how to craft the poison potion, you're going to be in a lot of trouble of just mixing random ingredients together. And I can tell you from right now that most random mixes of ingredients are going to give you these bombs. Bombs. And these bombs are pretty bad in the fact that they damage you as much as they damage your enemy. So if you want to craft these properly, you need to know the recipes. So just a quick rundown of the recipes. I do have a spreadsheet of all this stuff included in the description of this video. I'll also make a comment of the, of the spreadsheet I made for this uh, so you guys can go to it and just look at what you need. But a quick rundown of each thing. Uh, shield comes from wood, wood, flower. So if we go wood, wood, flower, this will give us a shield potion. We're going to have to wait on that, I think. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time. Wood, wood, flower. You can see we get a shield potion. You can do wood, mushroom, mushroom, or <laughs> I don't know why I keep calling these wood. They're thorns. Thorns, mushroom, mushroom will give you a poison potion. So we'll put those in there and you'll see that craft, up our, craft us up a poison potion. And this is why you need knowledge to use this kit to its best capability. Flower, flower, flower is going to make us a health potion. And then last is going to be mushroom, mushroom, mushroom for a sleep potion. That is all the combinations to make the different potions. Everything else will make a bomb. So wood, wood, wood makes bomb. Wood, wood, mushroom makes bomb. Flower, flower, mushroom makes bomb. Flower, flower, wood makes bomb. And wood, flower, mushroom makes a bomb. So... Like I said, there'll be a spreadsheet in the link below so you can check that out. Um, on that note, the next con, our fourth con, is how you have to roam to get ingredients. So if I just sit here at my base, yeah, sure, I'll get some ingredients like this one here, which is cool. But if I'm not roaming around and going places, I'm not going to get these other ingredients. As you can see, if I start to roam around the map and I go around, you'll see that there's ingredients everywhere. So definitely got to can't sit still with this kit. It's kind of like Elder Tree. You got to constantly move around, be gathering ingredients to get stuff. So that's definitely a con because you can't be at certain objectives if you're collecting ingredients. Uh, the next big uh, con is going to be it takes time to craft and stuff. So like if you're in a hurry and you're trying to whip up a quick potion, it kind of takes a little bit of time to be like, hmm, what was the recipe for a shield potion? Oh, that's going to be wood, wood, flower. So you'll throw wood, wood, flower, or thorn, thorn, flower. I got to quit calling that wood. It looks like wood, okay? So you got to throw that in the pot and you got to have that on top of your head. And that's going to take some time to craft. All this time is taking time. And then you can see it even takes some time to eat these things. So yeah, it definitely takes time and that's definitely a con. Now that we're done with the pros and cons real quick on the board, we're going to dive into some deeper details here. And uh, yeah, so basically we've went over the crafting patterns. Those will be in the description below, as I said. Uh, and then, but let's talk about damages and what each thing, item does. So your mini potion is going to give you 15 shield. Nothing special there. If you continue to eat mini potions, you're not going to get anything more than 15 shield. You can give them to other people if you'd like, but just simply pressing Q. So it makes you a good support unit. Next up, you got your health potion, which is the next simple one on our bar here. And all this is going to do is heal you 20 health. It does not seem to go up or down either way. As you can see, if I throw this, I get 20 health. 21, well, one was when I threw the second one. But you get 20 health off the sleep potion at max. Well, the health potion at max. The sleep potion is going to last for two seconds, just puts people to sleep. Simple as that. Now we get into the poison and the bomb potion. So bomb damage is obviously going to do the same amount of damage it does to you as your enemy for the most part. Explosive damage does get a little crazy. So everything has a little bit of a variable like uh, for without sharpness, it did like 24 to 28, no armor. And then it did like four to five to emerald. 
Uh, and then with sharpness, you're looking at like 29.34 to no armor, and then like 5 or 6 to emerald. I didn't test sharpness too with explosive, because I kind of felt like it wasn't necessary. Uh, overall, you shouldn't be making bombs, in my opinion. Next up though, with poison, you're going to deal like 36 damage base to people with no armor. As you can see me do that to myself here. We'll take about 36 damage from poison. Uh, leather, it's going to be 32, iron, 25, diamond, 22, emerald, 14, and then if you go sharp 1, those are obviously going to go up, and when you go sharp 2, you're looking at something like, with sharp 2, you're looking at 49 damage to no armor, and then 21 damage to emerald. So if you had sharp 2 versus emerald, 21 damage for one poison potion, that is pretty good. And it does stack with static, will not stack with fire though. So you have to have static if you're going to use the poison. Static poison alchemist is disgusting late game. It, it just kind of reminds me of Raven. If You could use Raven too, but Raven's cost you emeralds. You could just get poison potions for free, maybe. I don't know. That's up to you. Um, that's basically all the information you're going to need. Uh, if you do want the spawn commands, like I said, for all the items that I have on my bar... Uh, those are also going to be on the spreadsheet and I'll probably paste them into a comment or a in the description on that note guys Should you or should you not grind for alchemist? Honestly, it's level 10. It's the start of the battle pass Unless you're like not playing at all. You're not gonna get it. But is it worth playing? I guess uh, Yes, and no, it's a very versatile support kit But you gotta remember we have other versatile support kits in the game like Baker who has healing and speed boost Which are both very strong 30 heals and then speed so it kind of makes a little bit of this not as relevant as you'd think um, But yeah, I think definitely you could do something with the poison and the heals Those are both really good shield potions are decent later game early game 15 damage is nothing uh, But yeah, I mean it's, it's a mediocre. I'd say it's a mediocre support kit, but considering that it requires you to get level 10 and it's free, make sure you get this kit and pick it up and add it to your collection. It shouldn't take you long to get level 10 as long as you're doing your missions and uh, just simply playing the game. You'll definitely get level 10 in no time. I didn't pay for any ranks. I just got this kit by playing myself, so if, if I did it, you can do it. I believe in you. On that note, I think we're going to wrap up our video here on this. Uh, it's been super fun testing Alchemist and stuff. I don't think it's a kit I'll play a ton, personally, just because I think there's better things out there. Uh, that said, it could lead to some more interesting styled gameplay if you want to uh, want to dabble in that and get something different in your life. That said, we're going to wrap up this video by thanking our YouTube members. So thank you, Mama Peace. Thank you, Redwood Deadwood. Thank you, Axolotl. Thank you, A9Gaming. And thank you, Darkest Troller. Thank you all so much for being members of this channel. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.